One of the most crucial aspects of game development is level design. Luckily, Unity provides a built-in solution for this which is Pro Builder. While you could use external software like Blender but Pro Builder is much faster and easier to use, especially for prototyping and creating game levels directly within Unity. So let's get started and see how to create amazing game levels with Pro Builder. So, first we need to install the Pro Builder package. To do this, go to Window, then Package Manager and select Unity Registry. From there, find and install the Pro Builder package. Once it's installed, you'll notice a Create Cube icon appear in your editor. Click on this icon to create a cube anywhere in your scene. You can adjust the cube by clicking on the blue dots, which allows you to resize or reposition it as needed. In addition to creating cubes, Pro Builder provides a variety of primitives that you can use to create different shapes. To access these, left click and hold to bring up the selection of primitives. For example, let's choose the stairs primitive and create it in the scene. Once the stairs are placed, you can adjust the number of steps using the options in the menu. Additionally, you can modify the circumference to create rounded stairs. Keep in mind that if you change to the Move tool, the menu will disappear. If this happens, you can re-enable it by selecting the re-enable menu option. Next, let's create a cylinder. When you first create it, you'll notice that it looks quite low poly. To make it appear smoother and more rounded, use the side menu to increase the number of sides. If you switch to wireframe mode, you can clearly see the additional edges being added, which makes the shape smoother. Before we go any further, take some time to experiment and create different shapes to get comfortable with the tools and settings. There's also another tool called Poly Shape which allows you to create custom shapes using polygons. With this tool, you can draw any polygon shape and ProBuilder will automatically generate the corresponding 3D object. This is especially useful for creating unique, irregular designs. Now that we know how to create different shapes, let's see how we can manipulate them. First, delete all the objects in your scene except for the cube. To begin editing the cube, click on this icon. You'll notice three icons appear in the top bar which allow you to edit different aspects of the shape, like the vertices mode allows you to adjust the individual points of the cube, giving you fine control over its shape. The edges mode lets you manipulate the edges of the cube, which can be used to elongate or reshape the geometry. Finally, the faces mode allows you to modify the faces of the cube, enabling you to resize, extrude, or otherwise adjust the flat surfaces of the shape. These tools give you the flexibility to customize your objects as needed. Now, when we select a face and right click, a variety of options will appear. Similarly, if you select an edge or a vertex and right click, context specific options will show up. These options give you more control over shaping your object. For example, if I select a face and right click, one of the options available is bevel edges. This option allows you to convert sharp corners into smooth, rounded corners. You can adjust the bevel amount using the menu, and by ticking the live preview option, you can see the changes in real time before applying them. Another useful option is merge faces, which is quite straightforward. It merges two selected faces into one. To use this, select one face, hold down shift, and select the second face. Then, click on merge faces, and the two faces will combine into a single face. Now, if you select a face and move it upward, you'll notice that other vertices move along with the face. However, if you want only the face to move independently, or in other words, extrude the face, you can hold shift while moving the face. This action will extrude the face, creating additional geometry that extends from the original face. Now let's look at how we can perform a loop select. As you can see, you can manually select an edge loop by holding shift and clicking on each edge one by one. However, this method can be quite time consuming and tedious. To make this process faster, first select a single edge, and then press Alt-L. This shortcut will automatically select the entire edge loop, saving you time and effort. Now if you want to create an extra edge on your object, you can use the Knife tool. This tool allows you to cut your object in any direction to add new edges. However, you need to be careful when using it because if the points you create aren't perfectly aligned with the edges, it can cause geometry issues later. For a more efficient way to add a loop cut, there's a better option than manually cutting with the knife. Let's say you want to create a horizontal edge loop. Instead of cutting manually, select a vertical edge which is the opposite direction of where you want the loop, and press Alt-U, this will insert a horizontal edge loop automatically. 
This technique is especially useful when creating features like windows or doors. For example, if you want to create a window on a face, press Alt U to add the necessary edges, shaping the face into a window-like rectangle. After forming the shape, you can delete the face to create the window opening. However, deleting the face this way creates another issue. You'll be able to see through the model, as the geometry will now be open. To fix this, select the face of the window and extrude the face inward to create the missing back faces. This will close off the geometry. Afterward, you can delete the unwanted faces and everything will look correct. But if you look closely at the vertices around the edges, you'll notice a new issue. There are now overlapping vertices where there should only be one. To resolve this, you'll need to weld the vertices. Select the two vertices that need to be combined, right-click and choose Weld Vertices. Repeat this process for all overlapping vertices to clean up the geometry. Now let's look at how we can texture our Pro Builder shapes. Texturing can generally be divided into two types which is tiling and UV mapping. To understand the difference, I have two objects in Blender, a cube and a door. The cube uses a tiling texture which means its UVs can be expanded or scaled and the texture pattern will seamlessly repeat itself without any issues. This is ideal for situations where we want repeating patterns such as walls or floors where a consistent and infinite pattern is necessary. On the other hand, the door uses a texture atlas. You might be familiar with this technique when optimizing games. A texture atlas combines all textures into a single image, allowing you to create one material for multiple objects. You then adjust the UV mapping of each object to correspond to its portion of the atlas. This method reduces draw calls in Unity and improves performance. However, since all the textures are packed into a single image, tiling the texture is not possible. If you scale the UVs of an object using a texture atlas, the result will appear distorted or incorrect because the textures are confined to specific areas in the atlas. Now, let's see how we can implement these techniques in Unity. First, let's focus on creating a tiling material and applying it to a Pro Builder shape. First, download any seamless pattern for your texture. For this example, I have a wall and floor pattern. Import these textures into Unity and create a material for each. To create a material, right-click in the Assets panel, choose Create, then Material, and assign your texture to the material's albedo property. To apply this material to a Pro Builder object, go to Tools, Pro Builder, then Editor, and select Open Material Editor. This will open the material slots, drag and drop the material you created into one of the slots. Then select the faces of the object where you want the material applied, and click the Assign button. This will add the material to those selected faces. If you want to adjust the size of the repeated texture, you need to edit its UVs. To do this, open the UV editor by going to Tools, Pro Builder, then Editor and selecting Open UV Editor. At first, the UV layout might look messy, but don't worry, it's simple to adjust. Select the faces you want to edit and go to the Tiling option under the Actions tab in the UV editor. Here you can manipulate the tiling of the material, increasing or decreasing the scale as needed. You can also rotate the texture to align it properly with your object. For convenience, when working on larger projects, you might find it tedious to repeatedly navigate through the menus to open the material or UV editor. To speed up this workflow, you can assign shortcut keys. Go to Edit, Shortcuts, then search for Open Material Editor or Open UV Editor in the Shortcuts menu. Assign any keys you prefer. I usually use M for the Material Editor and U for the UV Editor. With these shortcuts, you can access these tools quickly and efficiently while working. Similarly, I created a floor texture and assigned it to the floor. However, the texture looks quite small, so we need to adjust the tiling in the UV editor. When we open the UV editor and select the faces, you might notice that there's no tiling option in the Actions tab. This can happen sometimes and it's actually a good opportunity to learn how to fix this issue. Remember earlier, when we discussed the two methods of texturing, tiling and UV mapping. In this case, the object is set to UV mapping mode, which is why the tiling option is missing. To switch it back to tiling mode, select all the faces of your object and click on Convert to Auto in the UV editor. Once converted, the tiling option will appear and you can adjust the scale of the texture as needed. After adjusting the tiling, you might notice that the floor pattern still doesn't repeat correctly across the entire surface. This is because the faces aren't grouped properly. To fix this, select a face, then hold Shift and select its opposite face. Once both faces are selected, click Group Selected Faces in the UV Editor. This will ensure the texture repeats seamlessly across the grouped faces. 
Repeat this process for the remaining faces until the entire floor texture looks consistent. Now that we've resolved this issue, let's move on to another method of texturing which is texture atlas and UV mapping. To understand how texture mapping works, let's use a door in the scene that was created with Pro Builder. If we simply add a repeated tile pattern to it, it won't look good because the door needs a specific texture map. In this case, we'll use a texture atlas and a door texture. First, create a new material using the same technique as before. Assign the texture to the material, then go to the material editor tab and assign that material to the material slot, then select all faces of door and assign that material. After that, open the UV editor and select all the faces of the door. To map the texture correctly, click on convert to manual to switch to manual UV mapping mode. Now, check if the texture is visible. If it's not, toggle the icon to enable the texture display in the editor. Next, select all the faces again and click on fit UVs. This will automatically adjust the UVs to fit the texture. You should see the texture applied to the door. You can now manually select the faces and adjust them on the texture to achieve the desired result. This step lets you move, scale or rotate the faces within the texture atlas to perfectly align the texture with the door geometry. Now let's talk about one final feature which is snapping. Snapping is a really useful tool that helps us position objects more precisely in the scene. For example, if I want to place a door close to a window or wall, I can use the move tool to do this. However, that can be time consuming. A much quicker way is to use snapping. To snap an object, simply hold the V key while moving the object. This will snap the object to the nearest vertex. It's important to remember that you shouldn't use the XYZ gizmo to move the object, because it won't snap. Instead, click and drag the object from the small box on the object itself to move it using snapping. This snapping method works not just for Pro Builder objects but for any object in your scene. It's a quick way to precisely place objects, saving you time and making your scene setup more efficient. That's it for today's video. I hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more great content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.